Hello everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our fourth lesson in meteorology. We're going to be discussing temperature. Definition of temperature is the measure of thermal energy. Objects that have higher thermal energy have higher temperatures than those with lower thermal energy. It's a number of different ways that the atmosphere can be heated and cooled. First one we will discuss is convection. Convection is the transfer of heat due to the bulk movement of molecules within a fluid. It's usually associated with instability and vertical development. So if we think the air is moving up, the transfer of heat is moving up because there's a bulk movement of air moving up. Advection is the transport of a property or quality by bulk motion. So for example, a moist air from the ocean moves over the land and causes fog. There's a property, there's a high amount of moisture being moved uh, by the bulk motion. Here's the equation, which you absolutely do not need to know, but this is the advection equation. I didn't even know there was an advection equation, but uh, yeah, here's our differential equation. Lastly, we have radiation. Radiation is the transfer of energy via light wave. The sun heats the earth by radiation, the Earth loses heat at night by radiation. We can talk uh, length about this, but uh, with photons and black body radiation and all uh, sorts of uh, fancy physics things, but for the purpose of our ground school, it's pretty simple. The sun heats the Earth via electromagnetic radiation and the uh, Earth loses the heat because it goes out into the atmosphere. Obviously, there are horizontal differences with temperature. Some areas are warmer than others. Uh, typically, the reason for that is that the underlying surface will affect the temperature of the air above it. So air over a cold ocean will be colder than air over a hot desert. Should be pretty obvious. Here's another important concept that, that may come up in your uh, during an exam, so it's important that you understand this really well. So if we recall the standard lapse rate, the lapse rate is the change of temperature with altitude of 1.98 degrees Celsius per thousand feet, or we'll call it two degrees Celsius per thousand feet, it's close enough. The dry adiabatic lapse rate, so that's the decrease in temperature with altitude of dry air is three degrees per thousand feet. And the wet adiabatic lapse rate, so saturated air is 1.5 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. So when we, we can, if we know the temperature and the dew point, we can predict the height of convective clouds. So remember the dew point is the temperature at which the air becomes saturated at a constant pressure. So here's how one of these uh, questions goes. If the temperature is 24 degrees Celsius and the dew point is 15 degrees Celsius, what is the base of the clouds? So the temperature dew point spread 24 minus 15 is nine degrees Celsius. We can assume that it's dry, so we have three degrees per thousand feet. So we go nine degrees divided by three degrees per thousand feet equals 3,000 feet. So the base of the convective clouds are going to be 3,000 feet. Sometimes, however, we have something called inversions. Inversions are when the temperature increases with altitude. This is often found on clear nights where this Earth's surface cools by radiation and cools the air immediately above the earth. We also find sometimes this radiation fog in areas where there are temperature inversions. Inversions are also found at fronts where warm air moves over colder air below. A subsidence inversion occurs when the air mass sinks, compresses, and then heats. So here's an example of how an inversion might look like from the side on the uh, Bottom here, we have cold, clear air. And as we increase our altitude, we end up with increasing temperatures right here, okay? Then at a certain point, we end up uh, with some turbulence and then the inversion ends. And it's at this point where it ends that we end up with turbulence above it, we might end up with some warm air. And this warm air is relative to the cold air uh, below it. And at this point, the temperature starts decreasing again with altitude. An isothermal layer is when there is no change of temperature with altitude. Talk about some heating and cooling mechanism. Convection means we end up with unstable air. Advection is air moving over a surface carrying its properties. 
and radiation is a heat loss or gain by electromagnetic radiation. An inversion is an increase of temperature with altitude, characteristic of very stable air. Two sample test questions. On a cold, clear night, the temperature drops. To what phenomenon can this be attributed to? A, convection, B, conduction, C, radiation, D, advection. So remember, cold, clear nights, the heat from the Earth ends up radiating into space. Correct answer, C, radiation. An increase of temperature with altitude results in A, an inversion, which has very stable air, B, an inversion which has unstable air, C, an isothermal layer which has stable air, or D, an isothermal layer which has unstable air. So remember, an increase of temperature with altitude is an inversion, so it's A and B, and inversions typically have very stable air. So the correct answer is going to be A. That concludes this lesson on temperature. Thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll see you in our next lesson.